library friends. Today my friend Brienne is going to share with us how to do geocaching. If you've never heard of geocaching before, it's pretty much like the world's biggest scavenger hunt. You go outside and on hikes you can find these really cool things. So she's going to share more uh, with us about that and then she's going to help us learn how to use a compass which is going to go along with our take and make craft this week. So if you can join us on Wednesday from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m., we will have a take and make craft as well as a new story walk and some other little surprises. So stay tuned. Hi there, my name is Brianne and I'm an outdoor educator with Endless Outdoors Company. And today we're going on a treasure hunt. Come along, let's see what we find. So what kind of treasure are we looking for? We're looking for what's called a cache. And where does a cache come from? Well, it comes from the game we're gonna play called geocaching. What do you need to play this game? All you need is a beautiful outdoor setting, technology, like your parents' cell phone, and of course, a compass, and probably even bug spray. So, what is geocaching? Well, it's simply using technology to find a cache. A cache can vary from super small micro all the way up to a large camo box. Now, of course, Large ones are probably more fun to find because they actually do have treasures in them that you can trade. Where the micro ones could be a little more difficult because they're really super small and well hidden. So, how exactly do you find them? Well, I'm about to show you. So in order to be able to find the geocache in any woods or even in your local town, you need to go to geocaching.com and sign up. You can also have your parents download the app to their phone and sign up that way. So once your parents have signed up for a free account, this will come up. You're gonna search local. So I'm gonna search Letchard State Park because that's where we're gonna find a geocache today. Now I could just go through the list and see what's listed, but I prefer using the map. So I'm gonna map these geocaches. And of course, you should do this as a family to find ones that you wanna find. So as you can see, there's so many around. Geocaching is very popular. I know exactly the location I want to search today, so I'm going to zoom in. So once you have zoomed into the area that you'd like to hike, walk, or bike in, you're going to click around and see which one you want to find. Maybe you want to do a mystery one. Maybe you want to do one lure by the water. Or maybe you want to do one you've done before, which is designated or shown by a smiley face. We'll click on that. Once you click on a cache, it gives you more information. The difficulty or how hard it is to find it. The terrain, which the lower the number, the less hills you have to climb. And of course, the size of the cache. This one's pretty medium sized. There'll also be descriptions for the person who put it there. In this case, it's a local tourism de department. Of course, you should read all this information before going out with your parents. But for today, I'm just going to take you there. So once your parents have signed up for a free account, you're going to look around your local neighborhood on the map that's on the website or even on the app on the phone. And you say, hmm, I want to go find that one. Then you're going to go with your parents' permission. If it's close, you may even ride your bike. Don't forget your helmet and find it. And of course, it's always fun to take everyone in your family along. So let's go friends, go get in the car. Don't forget. So this is how it looks like when you're using the app. You'll notice you still have the navigation and the log, difficulty, terrain, and size. You can also zoom in on it just like you would on the website. The only difference is the app allows you to see how far you are away from it and to signal you when you're close. So while this park is really known for its three beautiful waterfalls, we are not actually near waterfalls today. We're out looking for the geocache. And my compass is telling me that I need to go east. So let's go east and find that geocache. Now while the app is great, it's going to tell you how close you can get by yardage. So right now it's telling me I'm about 10 feet away. The nice thing about the app too, is that as you get closer, of course the numbers will go down. But, oh, 
I happen to miss it. So it's telling me my numbers are going up, so I need to turn around and find it. Let's go back the other way. Remembering to stay on the trail until the coordinates take us off the trail, which they're taking us off right here. We're gonna notice there is what's called a herd path, which means we're gonna follow that, not to disturb the surrounding vegetation. So follow this in. Our coordinates are alerting us that it's super close by. So at this point, we might have to do some investigating. And I notice there's a pink flag by the looks of it, but that's not what a geocache is. Remember, this is a big geocache. So we're gonna keep looking. We're gonna look around to see maybe where it could be hiding. We know it's not under there, even though that looked like something. You can even move some of nature around. I look over here. There's another dry log. I'm not seeing anything in there. So last but not least, we have this big stump here. So we're gonna take a look around and see if we see anything. Mm, nothing on this side. So let's go back out front. We look right down in and that, my friends, is what we call a large or extra large box or geocache. So let's get it. I'm gonna pull this out. Let's investigate it a little too. Looks to be like decorated to be a cow. Based on the county that we're in, kind of makes sense. Let's set it down and see what we got. So now my friends that we found it, we're going to open it and see what's inside. So in this case, this is a geocache that's malte. So there's code words that you need. So in this case, the code word from this one is education. see what we got. We got trial location. So it says, please read where you found is the game geocaching piece, part of a worldwide activity using GPS called geocaching. So like we talked about before, it just gives you a little background of what you found in case you didn't mean to find it. You happened to come across it in the forest. And of course, there's a log book in it. So we're not going to sign it today because I'm just going to log it on my geocaching app. But in case you just happen to come across it without your app, you can sign it and leave a little information, like the date, maybe a code name. And then of course, because this is a big one, there is treasures. So let's see what other people left us. Being that we're in Western New York near Buffalo, somebody left Niagara Falls postcard. It's a little wet, but that's the meat of the mist. We also have a squirrel, fitting because we're in the woods. Looked like at one point it kind of moved. What else we have? Oop. Starfish. I do love the beach. It looks like other people left a magnet just from the Amish Trail. So if you wanted to find out more information about the Amish, that's kind of cool to leave. And let's see what these cards are. Looks like it's part of another geocache bash, which they do happen all over the world. Some are really big. And of course, somebody left a lucky gold coin. And some other things like stamps. So, I'm actually not taking anything, which is legal to do. You can do what's trading. But there's nothing really I want to trade in here. So, I'm just going to leave what I brought, which are geocaching nickels. And you can scan and get some information about being outdoor ed. And I'm going to leave my favorite company's brochure. I'm going to close this back up. Just like if you're hiking for the day when it comes to geocaching, you want to leave no trace. Put things back the way you found them. So I'm just going to stack it back in exactly the way I found it for the next person.
just like I said, I'm going to make sure this goes back in and it's hidden just the way we found it. I also want to be sure that I'm walking out the same way I walked in, staying on the little herd path, I'm being sure not to destroy any other vegetation. Oh, I forgot to mention one very important thing. When you're out geocaching, you want to keep an eye out for people around you. You don't want to tell them where it's hidden because then it takes the fun out of it for them. Make them look for it, just like you had to look for it. Oh, if you do see someone looking, they're called mugglers. Mm-mm. We don't want to tell mugglers where we found so, the treasure. that, my friends, is geocaching. I hope you loved it. And remember, it can be as hard as you want it to be. There's even some mystery treasures, but you need to find one to find the next. And if you're really up for a challenge, there's even some high on top of mountains. There's even some out in the middle of some lakes. Challenge yourself. See what you can find. Bye, friends. Okay, so we just heard Brianne's awesome video about geocaching. I hope that you're able to get out there with your families and do some geocaching of your own. And next up is her video about using a compass, how to teach compass directions to kids and how to create some fun games for that. So stay tuned. Hi friends, my name is Brianne. I'm an outdoor educator with Endless Outdoors Company. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about using a compass. So what do you actually use a compass for? Lots of things. You should always use one when hiking. You should always use one when geocaching. And you probably should use one, or at least have one, in your kayak. Compasses do vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. They also vary from store to store, depending on what they carry. There are a couple main things that you should have, including a magnetic north, seen here as the red needle, it will move to magnetic north. More on that later. You should also have a direction of travel arrow somewhere on your compass. If it does not come with, with one, you can always paint one on or use the symbol of the company for the compass. So in this case, symbol here, I'll use that as my direction of travel arrow. One other item that should always be on here is the degrees, which will come in handy for more advanced users. If you're introducing compass use to children, and I highly recommend that you do, you should find a compass that fits these needs that I just listed and also makes it more interesting for them to use. So in this case, I have my compass, but he also has a different compass because he's younger and needs to explore a little more. What's on your compass? A. The compass itself. Mm-hmm. A thermometer on the back. A thermometer to help him learn about reading temperatures. A whistle. A whistle, which I highly suggest you teach your children to use only in... If you're in trouble. Emergency situations. What else is on your... On to the right, you push on one side and the other, pull magnifying glass. A magnifying glass, which... When you're teaching them how to use a compass, I highly suggest you go out in the woods and let them use the magnifying glass to explore leaves, snowflakes, and animals. So now you know what should be included on a compass for an adult and a compass for a child. Let's get into using a compass. To begin using your compass, the main rule you have to remember is to always hold your compass flat in your hand with your direction of arrow pointed towards your fingertips. No matter which direction you move, it should always be held this way. My assistant, Owen, is going to show you how to use his style of compass right now. Step one is to do what? Look at the arrow. Make sure your direction of travel arrow is where? Heading the way you want. Yes, heading the way you would like to travel or go. Step two is to do what? Flat. Make sure the compass is flat in your hand. Step three is he's going to look to see what direction it says right now with this arrow. West. So let me zoom in here. 
It is west. So now I'm going to tell Owen to take seven steps west. So he's going to walk looking at his compass to make sure it still says W as he counts to seven. One, two, three, four, five, seven. And he's going to stop at seven with the way he's going, holding his compass the way he had it to start. Then? And then he's going to find the direction opposite of the way he came, which is west. To so, east. To east. He's going to make 180 back to make sure his compass, arrow, is lined up to east. And then he's going to take how many steps? Seven. Seven One, steps. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. So you are now back to where? Where I started. Where you started. So here's our demonstrator, Owen. He's going to show you the use of a compass in action as we go find a treasure. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. So you'll see he's holding his compass flat. And he's always going to use this part as his directional arrow, which means it's always moving the way he's going for travel. So as he moves, his compass always stays that way. So, as you can see on his compass, it's pointing which direction right now? North. So he's going to take 10 steps north. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten. Okay. So he know. well, I know how many more steps he needs. As you can see, he's still holding his compass with the direction travel going that way. So he's going to take five more steps north. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. He's looking for a tree that is over there, the little one that's broken. Mm -hmm. Dry tree. That's what he's going for. He's going to count his steps, making sure he's looking at his compass. So it Don't always see points around. north and take as many steps as he needs to to get to the path. I'm looking for anyone. Are you ready to count your steps? Yes. Yeah. Your compass always has to point which way? North. Okay, so make sure it points north. Take Count your steps to the path. One, two, three, five, six, seven, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, 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 so we're going to add together the 26 and 15. How many steps do we have? So how many steps total did you take, Owen? 41. So he knows to go back to start right now. He needs to go which direction? East. Nope. You came north. What's the opposite of north on your compass? South. So he's going to turn around and walk how many steps south to go back to start? Good job. And that is simple pacing or steps to figure out your directions. And while the main focus today is using a compass and having children get used to using one also, I highly suggest you have them carry a backpack, including some of the 10 essentials that are made for their age level, including a compass, a flashlight, a headlamp, walking sticks, and of course, snacks that they enjoy and hydration. To further assist you in teaching children how to use a basic compass or for yourself to gain more confidence in using a basic compass that does not include a magnetic north or degrees, we suggest designing a course in your backyard that takes you from the back door to a corner using just steps in the four main directions, north, south, east, and west. We've also included templates on our website that will assist you in doing this activity. Once you feel confident in your child's ability, or even your own ability, to navigate your backyard using a simple compass, we suggest you go back to our templates and use some of the scaffolding activities listed on the bottom. 
The activities were designed to increase the difficulty and to assist you in gaining more confidence using a compass. One of the activities is to move from your backyard out to your community. Once you feel confident in your child's ability or even your own ability to navigate to a local place in your community, like a library, using simple steps or pacing and a basic compass, we do suggest you go back again to the template and do the next scaffolding activity. This would include having your child design a course or a route. We hope you have enjoyed this video and have gained confidence in using a basic compass. And since you'll be outside, please always remember to leave no trace, be prepared, and of course, have fun. See you soon, friends. Hey, library friends. Thanks so much for joining us this week with my friend Brienne learning about geocaching and compass directions. She's pretty awesome and the links are up there if you want more information on doing geocaching and compass directions. She has some printable sheets that you can check out. Um, so any questions, feel free, reach out to us or reach out to Brienne. And we'll see you next week. Bye!